I went to Crabby, ringed here in red, because it has really accessible mud. The waterfront is characterised by those twin iconic cast outcrops sticking out of the mangroves. At high tide, the mud is all covered with water, but down there, there are hundreds of mudskippers biding their time in their burrows until the tide retreats and they can come out and feed. Also waiting are thousands of crabs of various species. Here's the mud I came for, exposed at low tide. For the next few hours, in hot sunshine, it's going to be the happy feeding ground of thousands of crawling and creeping animals. Here I come, onto the pontoon, from which everything you're about to see was filmed. No need for me to get my feet either wet or muddy. The perfect place for making a mudskipper film. As the water retreats, each fish slides out of its burrow. Soon it's joined by hundreds more. They drag themselves forward across the mud using their pectoral fins. These are unusual in having a joint equivalent to the human shoulder. This gives them considerable strength and freedom of movement. As the water continues to drop, hordes of mudskippers move up shore onto the newly exposed mud. They seem to be having a pretty easy life, but lurking beneath the water, there's unseen danger. All this puff-faced water snake had to do was stick its head out of the water and grab a mudskipper. Meanwhile, the rest of them continue moving up shore, oblivious to what's just happened. See how there's quite a big range of ages and sizes. This is typical of mudskippers. Now, listen out for the raucous call of a collared kingfisher. For the next few hours, the mudskippers, along with thousands of crabs of various species, will devote their time to grazing on the mud. When the tide retreated, it left behind, on the mud, a slimy surface film of edible diatoms and algae. The fish picks these up, along with a mouthful of mud, by moving its head rapidly from side to side. Mudskippers are famously belligerent and intolerant of their neighbours. They don't really like the larger crabs intruding into their space. They'll put up with them up to a point, but if they get too close or hang around for too long, it's time to chase them off. The males are extremely territorial and spend a lot of time either fighting or building up to a fight. The raised dorsal fins are a way of intimidating the opponent. Often a fight never actually gets going. Raised fins and a threateningly gaping mouth are often enough to send the rival fleeing. There seem to be two different intensities of fights that break out. In low intensity fights, there seems to be little or no actual physical contact. The rival males constantly lunge at one another with open mouths, but without actually touching. In these contests, raising of the dorsal fins seems to play little or no part. But there's plenty of very vigorous tail waggling. The gaping mouth must be important. It seems to play a significant role in intimidating the opponent. In the right light and at the right angle, it's clear there are some bright red spots inside the mouth. Are these also part of the show? In high intensity fights, the two rivals throw themselves into physical battle right from the start. 
In these fights, the dorsal fins are almost constantly raised. This exposes the bright blue spots as the opponents grapple mouth to mouth. All this frenetic activity is taking place under baking sun at very high temperatures. This was affecting me pretty badly. The fish seem to be faring much better. When on land, mudskippers respire mainly through their skin. So every few minutes, they take a dip back in their water-filled burrow. When the fighting finishes, the courtship starts. Without warning, the males fling themselves into the air. This is designed to grab the attention of any female onlookers. Interspersed with these is plenty of vigorous tail wagging. This whole routine comprises a lengthy courtship dance. However, if he fails to arouse any interest in any of the nearby females, eventually the male gives up. Finally, he's had enough and gently subsides onto the mud. Up until now, I'd seen the cavorting antics of the male all around me on the mud, but without a single successful outcome. No female takers. Eventually, that was to change. This male turned out to be a winner. So what's all this about? He's trying to persuade a female to come back into his water-filled burrow and lay some eggs. She'll stay there for a while before departing. It's then the male who takes care of his developing family. Here's another winner. The female followed him back to his burrow and then went down inside a second or two after I'd finished filming, assuming that she wasn't going in. After spending all day out on the exposed mud in the hot sun, everything was finally inundated by the incoming evening tide. <laughs>